Hi, this is Pam. Suffering with anxiety, maybe racing hard at night, like little panic attacks, insomnia, air hunger, little blood blisters on our, especially in our torso, those are just some of the symptoms of Babesia. And Babesia is a parasite that is quite common, not just in people, but also in people that suffer with diseases like multiple sclerosis, ALS, Parkinson's, etc. And that's what we're talking today about is Babesia. That's something that I didn't know about years ago. If you follow our work, you understand that we believe and we know that infections cause multiple sclerosis. And this is one of the infections that may have to be treated. So the nice thing is if you understand what it is, what the symptoms are, that's something you can talk to your doctor about. Babesia is very significant. Dr. Klinghardt is one of the hero doctors that I really admire a lot. And I just want to read a little quote from him. He works with a lot of Lyme patients. And he has shared that Lyme patients with features of multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, or ALS, severe chronic depression also, have Babesia until proven otherwise. Current tests are not sufficient as proof of absence of this parasite. So that's what we're talking today about is Babesia, what it is, what the symptoms are, what the treatments are. If we haven't met yet, my name is Pam Bartha and I'm the author of Become a Wellness Champion and the founder of Live Disease Free. And it is such a privilege for me to share this with you because I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis over 30 years ago. And in the course of the disease, um, I was fortunate to catch it really early on, but I really believe that I have had Babesia also. And I'm going to talk about some of the symptoms, some of the really common symptoms. But what is Babesia? Babesia is a very small single-celled parasite, and we get it through uh, the ticks, biting insects. So especially the ticks, I don't know about mosquitoes, but for sure ticks. So it is one of the vector-borne infections associated with Lyme disease. So I've talked about Borrelia before and there's Bartonella. There's a whole bunch that travel together if we're infected by ticks. So with the Babesia, it is a single cell parasite we get from ticks. It's similar but not the same as malaria. So it's a small parasite that loves to infect our red blood cells and it causes changes, um, especially if it's not a low-grade infection. If it becomes more populated, we notice changes in our in our blood work, especially with respect to our red blood cells, and we'll talk about that. But it is something that is not really well understood. It is the testing is quite poor for it. We'll talk about some of the tests, but the symptoms are pretty characteristic. And there is some overlap between different infections of Lyme disease. And we're talking about this, especially because I have coached over 700 students in the academy. I've coached over a thousand students in, in different versions, like home study course, et cetera. But the academy is where I spend a lot of time with the students and we're working together closely. And we do see that the vast majority of the time, someone who is diagnosed with MS has many, many symptoms of Lyme disease. I really believe that these vector-borne infections are part of what's causing the symptoms of multiple sclerosis. And Babesia is just one of them. So not every MS patient will have a lot of symptoms of Babesia. They could still have low grade, but it's when we have a lot of the symptoms, that's where it's really problematic and we really want to knock back that microbe also. So Babesia, uh, very often if we have a mild case, it goes unnoticed. But again, as it becomes more populated, it's a problem. And there are... There's one strain that they talk a lot about, but actually there's at least 15 to 20 different types of strains of Babesia. So this parasite, it is not well studied yet, and that's a real problem for us. But they find it in North America, in Asia, in Africa. And sometimes with some species, it might be a rodent that is the host. So it'll go from the rodent and then the tick will pick it up and give it to us, sometimes cattle but there are different types of hosts. And as far as the course of Babesia, there's kind of three different 
ways that people handle it. Number one is if we become infected, we may have some flu-like symptoms. We might have fatigue. We might have some chills or a fever. This can happen one to, I think it was six weeks after being bitten by the tick. So it's not something that necessarily happens right away. And so headaches, fatigue, chills, fever, and it's really hard to know if that would be a flu or what, right? Because especially if we don't have the bullseye rash from a tick bite, we may not even know that we were bitten by a tick. Another, the second type of phase of the disease is a severe case of Babesia. And yes, people have died from this, but it I don't know how common that is. It doesn't seem to be that common. I think more often it's people that have they're immune compromised, maybe elderly, or people that have maybe lost their spleen in a car accident. And because the spleen helps to get rid of infected red blood cells. So if you don't have your spleen, then your body can't get rid of it as quickly. And so with the the type that's kind of relapsing where you might have more symptoms and less symptoms, that would be more if we're dealing with chronic disease. I just want you to think about some of these symptoms and see if they ring true for you. So it's kind of like a relapsing course where it can be stronger at times and then weaker at times, but drenching sweats at night. So some women may think that this is menopause and it's actually a parasite that's causing this. Shortness of breath, which is air hunger. And maybe you're laying in bed and you just notice that your heart kind of like skips a beat or maybe it's a racing heart at times. That is definitely a symptom of Babesia and headaches. Regular symptoms of deja vu is another type of common symptom of Babesia. Petechiae, which are small little, like tiny little blood blisters. They're like purple, red, and they're just like a little, a bit, a little, little bit of blood that would just be in kind of a tiny circular blister on your skin, mostly on your torso. Tinnitus ringing in the air, ears persistent dry cough, anxiety, panic attacks, insomnia, of course, fatigue. And then with respect to our red blood cells, because Babesia infects our red blood cells, so when we get blood work done with our doctor, this is where we can look to see, do we have lower than normal red blood cell count? And also the volume, like what Dr. Klinghardt has found is that often people with Babesia have larger red blood cells. So that would be the MCV test result. If that is increased, that is basically the volume of the red blood cell if it's bigger than normal. And as our red blood cells are impacted, then we find we have less oxygen that can be part of the air hunger. Plus also he felt that the larger red blood cells would not go through the smaller capillaries as well. And so we can be starved for oxygen. So air hunger is another really big sign if we have a higher amount of Babesia inside of us. And that would be like if you are going walking up a hill and you're just so winded, like not normally winded, where the point is like, this is just not normal. I'm not this out of shape. So that would be air hunger. And as you treat Babesia, that goes away. And then all of a sudden you can catch your breath a lot easier. So um, issues with our red blood cells where we have a different, um, less red blood cells and also that they're larger. Maybe we bruise easily. We may find that our platelets are a little bit low. So those are kind of blood work things we would look at. So the reason I'm sharing this with you is that the way that I recovered from multiple sclerosis is I played an active role in my healthcare. Unfortunately, not a lot of our practitioners are experienced at recognizing these parasitic infections. We're told that we don't have parasites in developed countries and nothing could be farther from the truth. Make sure to watch some of my other videos if you wanna learn more. We have a playlist on YouTube, Live Disease Free. But the key is that in order to get well, in order to have an amazing life like I have for over 30 years now, you have to learn these basics yourself. And yes, we can get help in treating, but, and this is where we'll talk about the treatment in a minute, but it's not super easy and we'll talk about why that is. But the key is that my doctor would never have picked up Babesia or Lyme disease. Of course, I got diagnosed over 30 years ago and it's a little more common, but still today, our neurologists won't pick that up. Our, our GPs won't pick that up. 
it might be a functional medicine doctor that we talk to or a Lyme litter doctor that might pick it up. But again, they all have different degrees of success in helping their patients to recover from these parasite parasitic infections. So Babesia is something that I didn't know about before. And I hope that this helps you. Like if you have a lot of these symptoms, it's something that you definitely want to talk to your doctor about. If you need support in treating these infections, that's what we do in the Live Disease Free Academy. Uh, to help you to find the right help and to get the right treatments, et cetera. We have students all over the world doing that. But when we look at the the treatment, well, first the testing. The testing is difficult. The blood smears, it's really hard to find the Babesia. You really need to have somebody who is experienced in recognizing the parasite. Um, there can be like a, a hollow ring. There can be just the small dots that you would see as a the proto it's called a protist a single cell parasite but it has to be somebody experienced when they're looking at the blood work pcr is another way of testing for the um for this parasite for sure but the people that are more susceptible would be people let's say if they have lyme disease the doctor's working with them and they're just not responding to the lyme treatment but there's another part of that it could be other parasites too Elderly could be more prone to having Babesia issues and also people that have had the their spleen removed because it's not going to then it the we our body has a decreased ability to get rid of these infected red blood cells. And then another big reason is just the compromised immune system from severe dysbiosis, meaning that we have a lot of other parasites. So we have a lot of other parasites, a lot of fungus, our immune system is taxed dealing with all of this disruption in our ecosystem. And then little parasites like Babesia can become a problem. And I think that's probably a big part of it. Because when we're really old, also, most of us are really infested with a lot of disease-causing microbes. So again, the blood smears would be one. And PCR. And there's also an antibody testing um, with immunofluorescence. So that's another way to test. But honestly, what I've heard from a few doctors that have a lot of experience in this, they really look at clinical symptoms. And then some of these practitioners might use energy testing also for identifying if they if they can sense that we have a higher than amount Babesia, and then also which of the herbs will test well for us. With respect to treating Babesia, uh, there are a couple of different courses for antibiotics. One of them is less adverse effects, uh, which would be azithromycin and malarone. And then the other one, if you have severe uh, babesiosis, that's what the disease is called, babesiosis, then you would use clindamycin and quinine or quinine. And sometimes they do an exchange fusion where they actually take some of your red blood cells out and they give you healthy red blood cells from someone else. But I don't know that that is something that does not this, all with all medical intervention, we always look at benefit versus risk. And if we're on death's door, then yes, maybe that would be helpful. But if we're not at death's door, then when we're receiving blood from someone else, we could also be picking up some other parasites because this can actually be contaminating some of the blood supply, the Babesia. So that would be really important to consider, but that's something you would talk with your doctor about. And then there are certain herbs. So artemisinin, which is an extract of sweet wormwood, that has been really shown to be helpful for Borrelia, the different types of Lyme infections, including Babesia. And then also there are some great herbal blends. There's Beyond Balance. There's uh, the Lyme Cocktail. I believe that that would also help with Babesia. But this is something where you need to work with someone who will help you to find the, the right treatments for you. But I've heard from people that it can be life changing when they treat that Babesia if they're if they have high amounts of it. And in the Live Disease Free Academy, we work in a different way. What we found and what Dr. Klinghart has found and a lot of other really not a lot, I would say a few other doctors that have a lot of experience in helping people recover is that when we have a lot of Lyme symptoms, it's usually that we have a parasitic infestation. So if we treat the parasites first and we knock back the fungus, and when I say parasites, like they're all parasites, fungus and Babesia, but the bigger parasites. So the worms, the roundworms, the flukes, the flatworms, etc. And so this is where we knock back 
the bigger parasites, we knock back fungus, then we take a break and very often on their break week, they'll start to knock back the Lyme infections with herbs and blends of herbs. And then they'll do a few cycles of that. And if you if we just lead with trying to treat Babesia or trying to treat Borrelia, we don't have a lot of success. I personally have not seen a lot of success with antibiotics in not myself, but in people that have come to work with me that have done months and months of antibiotics in the past. So this is this is a field where I think we have more work to do whether it's not getting through biofilms, whether it's not getting deeper enough into the tissues, whether the microbes are adapting to the antibiotics too quickly, I don't know. But it seems to be very limited success with antibiotics. With, you know, certain doctors, maybe they're having success, but a lot of people that I've come across, they're not having a lot of success with the antibiotics. So the true way to recover from Babesia and all these other infections is number one is to follow a low carb eating plan because most of these microbes they thrive on carbohydrates when we change our diet we see that we have a lot of symptom improvement because the infections are less active the inflammation starts to go down and we have a lot of symptom improvement like neurological symptom improvements so with that then we support the body. So we make sure we're having daily bowel movements because the par parasites make us constipated or have a diarrhea. So regular bowel movements, having at least eight hours of sleep a night, again, with Babesia and others, we find that we have a lot of insomnia. We have a hard time falling asleep. We wake up a lot. And then the next step, so supporting the body through various steps, looking at our blood work, supporting our physiology, and then we get to treatment. So if we just jump right to treatment, we'll be very sadly disappointed. But when we do this work ourselves, and that's what we do in the academy, then we find the treatments are a lot more effective. So even if we have Babesia, like if it's life-threatening Babesia, then we would probably treat that, knock it back a bit first. But to have ongoing success, we would want to deal with the dysbiosis that we're dealing with, the out of balance, all of the par the parasitic infestation that we're dealing with. That's really what dysbiosis mean. It means that we have a parasitic infestation. And so that is going to be successful long term. But just leading with treating Babesia won't be because most people that are infected with these Lyme infections, they don't show symptoms because their microbiome is just imbalanced enough that their immune system is handling it. But when we become too out of balance, then viruses and small bacteria, these secondary infections become a problem. So that's why we always have to correct the microbiome and then our immune system very often will deal with these infections on their own. So that's what I wanted to share with you. The treatment for babesiosis would take several cycles because if we have a, an infected red blood cell that lives for about four to five months, we would wanna do at least four to five cycles. But if you're gonna use antibiotics, you definitely would work with a doctor. Uh, but again, we've found that very often, like the herbs can be really helpful especially when you're using a holistic approach and when you're dealing with the, the rest of the dysbiosis or the parasitic infest infestation that we're dealing with. All right, so I'm going to go to your questions. I don't know if all of you, some of you joined a little bit later. Hi, hi, Don. Hi, Alexander. Hi, Chris. You were bitten by a tick back in 2010. You didn't suffer with any Babesia symptoms that you are familiar with, but you do have a bunch of tiny red dots See, that's the difficult thing is that like with all of these symptoms that I shared with you, they may not all only be associated with Babesia. And sometimes we can get these red dots and it could be Babesia, but we still might not get a lot of other symptoms. It's when you have, let's say, five or 10 of them, let's say when you lay down in bed at night and you notice that your heart is, is kind of going or you start having panic attacks you know, when you have a number, air hunger, heart racing, heart skipping a beat, when you start having stronger and stronger symptoms, like a persistent dry cough all the time, like we get a little cough once in a while, or we might get a flu. But if you notice that you're having a consistent dry cough, heart acting up, insomnia, panic attacks, you know, the blood blisters on and on. Cause like I got a lot of those little blisters when I went through pregnancy and so did my sister. And my sister never had MS. And my other sister, she tested positive for uh, Brillia and Bartonella, but she's asymptomatic. So her microbiome is 
intact well enough, in balance well enough that her body will deal with it. We're always infected by these. We might get a mosquito bite and we might be infected with different microbes through mosquito, through, it's not only ticks. So it can be other bite, it can be a horse fly, it can be a black fly. So we're going to be exposed to these microbes all the time. We just have to get our body into a place where we are in balance enough that our immune system can take care of these microbes. So it's not just about taking an antibiotic, because if we just take the antibiotic, we'll find that we're right back to square one in a few months, maybe even in two months or so, where the Babesia is strong again, because they're not going to completely sterilize our body, and we may be infected again. So we have to think differently. We have to start to think about, okay, how can I change the inside of my body so that my immune system is strong enough to be fighting for me. And sure, I could treat larger parasites once or twice a year because we do come in contact with parasites, whether we're working in the dirt, maybe we have animals, etc., eating in restaurants, wherever. We're exposed to parasites. So the bigger worms, yes, treat those. But when we really keep building up the good and knocking back the bigger bad microbes, we notice that these little things like Babesia and Bartonella and Borrelia and Ehrlichia, all of the vector-borne bacterial and even Clostridia and E. coli and all of these others, I mean, unless we eat contaminated food with a high level of E. coli, then we might have a problem. But we will be able to fight off some of these smaller microbes. If we're in the position though, let's say we have MS and we are really weak and we are sick, and we have a lot of these symptoms, and I'll just read them over again because they're they're very, very characteristic. The hallmark symptoms are definitely panic attacks. Let me see here. Um, panic attacks and night sweats. So some of us think that it's hormones and it's not hormones. But again, the really common symptoms would be uh, like kind of like the symptoms are stronger at times and maybe not. So maybe if we get a period where we have less stress and we're sleeping better and we're eating right and we're exercising, we might have less symptoms if we're not dealing with chronic disease. But if we're dealing with chronic disease and we're really weak and we're on immunosuppressive drugs, then we might notice that we have drenching night sweats shortage of breath, which is air hunger, skipping or racing of hearts. So we might feel that our heart rate is just like kind of skipping a beat, or it's just kind of racing. And headaches, again, we should get these things checked out to make sure we don't have arrhythmias, etc. But a lot of these heart issues are caused by these infections. Headaches, um, feeling like a lot of deja vu, and they call it petechiae, which are those small little blood blister spots, often more so on our torso than in our legs and arms. We might have some on our legs and arms, but more on our torso. Persistent dry cough, anxiety, panic attacks, insomnia, fatigue. And then when we look at our blood work again, looking for looking at our red blood cells and noticing that our red blood cell count might be low, our platelet count might be low. We might have larger than normal red blood cells. So the MCV would be a higher value, it would be out of the normal range and higher than normal. And also like uh, easily bruising because our platelets are involved. So those would be a lot of common. So if we have a lot of those symptoms, then definitely we should get checked to see if we have Babesia through energy testing. And I think somebody asked me about the energy testing. Uh, the little tiny red dots on your abdomen, yeah. That definitely could be Babesia for sure. Um, others that have been infected with the, that have this. And oh, sorry, there are symptoms, digestive issues also. I just didn't mention them. I, but they definitely are. I guess that's a hard thing to determine because a lot of people with chronic disease, they have digestive issues anyhow, but you can have things like nausea and stomach pain, et cetera. So definitely. So you did treat with frequency medication and a lot of other symptoms went away, but your digestive remained. And these red dots remain mostly on the abdomen. So the red dots, I'm not sure how to get rid of them. I still have mine too. 
Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to continue to look into that. But as far as still having digestive issues, you probably have parasites too. It's very common that those of us that would show Babesia symptoms have roundworms. We might have flatworms. We may have tapeworms. Really common. Chris, if you're new to my work, make sure to watch the playlist that I have, the infections associated with MS. That would be on Live Disease Free. So we, I talk about the roundworms that Dr. Alan McDonald found in the spinal fluid of every MS patient. Our students have passed hundreds and hundreds of worms. Like They send me pictures every week. And then there's also biofilms we're dealing with. So it's kind of like a slimy tent that these microbes produce and they hide under them. It protects them from our immune system and from medications. So that's another issue. We have to help to break that up so that we can treat them better. And that's why they persist in our body because we don't get to all of them. But you probably have other parasites. That is the big thing is that the sicker we are, the more out of balance we are and the more, the greater the populations of those infections, those parasites are in our body. And that's, so when we're at the line where we have MS, PLS, ALS, we have these parasites all the way into the central nervous system. We have m several, and that's with our students. They're testing well for three to five parasite drugs at one time. They're always testing well for fungal drugs. They also test well for the herbs to treat Lyme. And so that's what we're dealing with. And that's why we're not going to have a single pill cure. We have to knock back all of these different groups. And then we have to rebuild the good ones, the good microbes, the, the health promoting microbes. Frequency medicine can be helpful, especially for very small microbes, but I found that that's just not enough by itself, and especially if you haven't treated the other parasites. So it can be used. I don't like, we've used light therapy, frequency therapy. I love it, but when we have a really significant infestation, it's usually not enough by itself. It can be an add-on help, but it, we need more. Your other symptoms went away, but digestive remained the same. So continue treating parasites. Hi, Valerie. Where do you go to get energy tested? Anita's asking. So what our students do is that, uh, like for Babesia, it would be certain antibiotics. So if you are going to, uh, this is the problem. I will give you some information, but a disclaimer also, because if you don't know what you need, and you go to a practitioner and you, let's say you go to a Lyme litter doctor and they're just gonna put you on a bunch of antibiotics to treat Babesia, you're gonna have very limited results. You might have a little bit of symptom improvement at the beginning, but you'll find that you just don't get 100% better. You'll find that the Babesia will flare its ugly head again in the future. So with our students, what I teach them to do is number one, to prep, to get ready themselves to treat. So they're really supporting the body. They're having a lot of symptom improvement. Then they're looking for a practitioner who knows how to understands like what we're doing. So they, they understand that it's not just Babesia, that you would have definitely other parasites to treat the bigger ones first, to knock back fungus first. That way your body is going to be involved in treating uh, Babesia, like dealing or killing, treating it. Very important because we need our immune system to do that. So the types of people that do energy testing would be, let's say, a chiropractor that does applied kinesiology or maybe a naturopathic physician that does some type of energy testing. It could be uh, there's machines like the Vega machine or the EAV machine, the AMA machine, there is advanced muscle testing like ART, autonomic response testing. And so basically they would have to have samples of the antibiotics or the treatments or the herbs in their office. And they would also have to be willing to energy test you for them. So they would take one dose of a certain parasite or antibiotic into your energy field, whether they put it on a plate or they hold it into your energy field and through the machine or through their muscle testing, they see if it makes you stronger, balances you, or it has no effect on you. And that's how they determine because we don't have good tests. We really don't have good tests to pick up Abesia, to pick up all these other parasitic worms. That is why the energy testing is the most help right now. But again, if you do it in the wrong order, 
you're just going to spend a lot of money and a lot of time and you're going to find that you are still at square one. Or you might be a little worse, especially if you do a lot of antibiotics, because that's really why a lot of us are at this place, because we did too many antibiotics early on in our life. Hi, Brian. Hi, Heidi. A couple more questions here. Um, I have Babesia, red dots. Most docs say it's yes, uh, but that's just saying what it is, but what causes it, right? What causes it? it? We don't just get these little red spots on our torso for no reason, but they don't know what's causing it. So they just give it a name, just like MS or like ALS. It's like you have these symptoms, we'll give you this label, but what is causing that? And that's where they don't know. And it is not normal to get those little blood blisters on your torso. It is some type of a microbe. I don't know if that Babesia is the only one that can produce that, but it definitely is one of the symptoms. And that's why, you know, we don't just look at, oh, I've got these little blood blisters, so I have Babesia. It's like, do I, like maybe you do have a very small amount. Maybe they could pick up a little bit of DNA through a DNA test, but does that mean that's what's causing your symptoms? Is if you have, you know, five of those symptoms really strong, you're getting the panic attacks, insomnia, your heart is going off, you have the, the cough all the time, and like a bunch of those symptoms, then it's like, okay, I, I think I need to get this checked, right? Otherwise, we can use herbs to knock back the Borrelia, Babesia, Bartonella, like artemisinin, the wormwood, sweet wormwood is a really helpful worm, wood, uh, sorry, a herb. But you have to be careful too. You've got to know how to use it with any wormwood. You don't use it ongoing forever. You have to take breaks. You have to take enough for it to be effective. That's why you need to work with someone. So there are, oh, there is one other, uh, which the other uh Cryptolepsis. Cryptolepsis is another one, but artemisinin is a really important herb for all of the Lyme infections. Anita, once knocking back infection, how do we get your muscles back to normal? So when you treat the infections, people notice that their mobility is better, but their muscles are weak because they haven't used them. So then they have to start doing exercises. And with some of our students that, let's say, haven't walked for years, they start using crutches, they start doing um, squats in doorways. The MS gym, I love them. They're great. They have a lot of modified exercises for those of us recovering from chronic disease. And so we have to build up our muscles. You're absolutely right. But we can't, we can try to exercise. But when we have these infections causing so much inflammation inside of us, we just keep losing and losing more strength no matter how hard we're trying to exercise. That's why we also have to treat those infections. And as we do, we find that all of a sudden we have more strength, we have more mobility, and then we can start to build on that. So that's where we take back our mobility. But it has to be hand in hand with treatment for sure. Yes, Charlene, absolutely. Hi, Sunny. Um, is treatment of N, um, NMO and MS different. I'm not sure what M or NMO is. All I can say is that whatever disease that is, with all chronic disease, it's caused by infections in the body. Make sure to watch our videos. We've got tons, I've got tons of videos on YouTube, Live, Live Disease Free. And I talk about the different types of infections. So we are working with with students that have Parkinson's or ALS or PLS, and it, they are all infections. We might have similar infections and then also different infections. And certain microbes like to live in certain parts of the body. And they, let's say our joints, our central nervous system, our reproductive organs, et cetera, our lungs, and they cause symptoms in that area. And then we get a disease label, right? And the problem is, is that we all use the same strategy to recover. Stop feeding the problem, support your body, then start to treat, and then obviously build a healthy lifestyle. Like all the things we know we're supposed to do, that has to be incorporated. Rebuild our natural defense, bring back the health promoting microbes. But really the key from a lot of different programs and a lot of different support is that number one, you have to play the biggest role in your recovery. Number two, you have to treat the cause, which is infection. It's not just toxins. It's not just the heavy metals in our environment and the different toxins we're dealing with in our air, in our water. 
it is that our microbiome, our microbiota is so out of balance. We have so many parasites that we are so sick. And that is really the biggest cause of our symptoms. How do I know that? Because I've worked with over 700 students that are really, really sick not just with MS. And it's miraculous how much recovery people can have a lot more than they thought possible as they treat these infections. What that means is that the damage we're dealing with, a lot of it is still in the inflammation stage. It's not in the permanent scarring of the myelin sheath stage. So that can be reversed. So what we do is help students to do, just support the body extensively, everything they can do to support the body, treat the cause, and then watch the magic, the miracle body start to heal itself. It knows what to do when it has the right support. Hi, Kevin. Awesome, you're about to start treatment. Kevin's had a lot of symptom improvements already. He's actually recovering from MS and he's actually getting on with his career again and he hasn't even started treating. That's just in the prep phase, so that's awesome. Hi, Alicia. Hi, Sunny. Hi, Karen. And, oh, I'm, I have full confidence Kevin is going to, he's just rocking it here. So Don, hi. And Charlene, you have all these symptoms. You were blamed it was on mold. And that's a really good point, Charlene, that mold very often, if we lived in a moldy environment, it definitely wears our immune system down. And again, there can be overlap of mold symptoms or fungal symptoms and the and all kinds of other symptoms even other parasites but especially the Lyme infections but that's something that you really need to look in it could easily be that you're dealing with Babesia also but you definitely have to treat the mold also which is fairly challenging and again with our students is that very often the mold cannot be treated well enough unless we treat those bigger parasites also because fungus in our body loves is like the great recycler and it loves when we have a lot of waste from these worms and parasites dying and bacteria all of the debris metabolites so that's a great living environment for mold so we definitely want to decrease the disease causing microbes the big worms the little parasites the small single cell parasites like babesia and others and then we want to build back the good microbes and we do want to treat fungus always for sure when we have chronic disease. So I'm happy that that helped you. If, if any of you are joining late, make sure to listen to the first part where I talked about all of the symptoms and how to treat. You're very welcome. So if you are someone who has just found me and you're like, wow, this is really interesting. I didn't think that infections could be causing all my problems then watch my videos on YouTube and Facebook, especially YouTube, we have uh, a whole like playlist. And you can start learning about the infections, you can start changing your diet, you can start noticing significant symptom improvements. And if you need support in building a plan and treating these critters, that's what I help people do in the academy. So then reach out, watch my masterclass training, there will be a link for it in this description. And it's a, a three month online course and I work with the wellness champions. We have students that join every week and it's really awesome because they are in the process of treating or getting ready to treat and then treating, getting their life back. This is something I'm not aware of that anyone else is doing this as a program. Sure, you can go to a different clinic and you can spend thirty to $80,000 and have them to try to help you to treat these infections but it doesn't have to cost that much you can do a lot of the work yourself and it's super exciting to see what recovery we can have absolutely so with that um, Heidi then just make sure to reach out to us because you said you wanted to join us um, I, I will be sending the link in this video as soon as I'm done I'll put that in there you can watch it that is the masterclass training, which talks a lot in detail about these infections. And then if you're like, yes, I want to be part of the academy, we'll send you a link to my calendar. You can listen to the Coachathon. Make sure to listen to the Coachathon that talks about the academy in great detail. And then I will meet you and you can get started right away. All right. So with that, I will be back next week at the same time, five o'clock Pacific. Take care and bye-bye for now.